Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about what you need to know to take fast mid control on Ancient. We'll talk about some key timings to be aware of, the general utility needed, and lastly what the CTs could do to counter you. With that said, let's get started. Now the first fundamental thing you need to know about taking mid is the timing. If you have the best spawn for mid, you will always spot the CT crossing to cubby. So what that means is that by recognizing when you have the best spawn, there's always an opportunity to try to catch the CT in middle who tries to cross to cubby. Here's another example, so Electronic has the best spawn here, so he uses it knowing that he'll be able to catch any CTs trying to cross the cubby. Now something that the CTs can do to make getting this pick more difficult is to throw the close Molotov from mid. If the CTs throw this Molotov, it makes it substantially harder for the T to go for this pick, unless they're willing to go through the Molotov and take some damage. One way to counter this is to simply throw a smoke on top of the Molotov, so that once again, it gives you a chance to challenge mid without taking any damage. As well, generally if you're coming in a pair, you want your second player to be the one who smokes the Molotov, so that your first player can focus simply on taking the fight towards mid. And the strength of taking mid as a pair is that you give yourself a better chance of trading kills, and the coordination with having the second player smoke the Molotov helps the first player a lot, so that the first player doesn't run into a situation where they don't have their gun out yet. Now there is a safer option of pressuring mid that works extremely well with the op, and that's this pick here from Hades towards the cubby position as a way to catch any CTs crossing there. With this pick, the main thing you want to watch out for is the Molotov that basically lands at your feet. Because of this Molotov, you can't hold this angle for very long without taking a lot of damage. But what you can do is actually preemptively drop the smoke in the corner so it cancels out the Molotov and give you time and space to be able to kill somebody crossing over towards cubby. And as we can see with the smoke, since it pops in the corner, it provides just enough of an opening for somebody to actually be able to spot through this gap right here. So using this smoke to cancel any potential Molotovs is a great way to give yourself time and space to catch anybody crossing into Cubby. Now sometimes the CTs may smoke the entire choke point, not giving you that gap anymore, but what you can do is actually boost on top of a teammate over the smoke to see if they're coming up towards Catwalk. Now let's talk about the supportive utility that will help with taking middle. This would be the Window Smoke, the Donut Molotov, the Donut Smoke, and lastly the flashes coming over the wall. And if we combine this utility with what we know about entering up middle, it can be rather simple to take mid control. But let's break down what each piece of utility is doing to help. First, let's talk about the window smoke. Now the window smoke is actually a smoke that can be thrown instantly from your spawn point. There are 6 spawns for T's on Ancient, and so far at the moment, 5 out of those 6 have specific lineups. Those lineups will be in the description below if you want to learn them. But what this means is that you'll always have somebody who can throw the smoke, especially with the new nade dropping update. And for that last spawn that doesn't have a lineup, you can simply throw the smoke like this, a very simple way that doesn't need to be super pixel perfect. Now what the smoke does is it actually forces the CTs to make a decision the moment they get to window. They either push past the smoke and try to hold mid, or they fall back behind the smoke and simply give mid to the T's. The next set of utility is the donut, molotov, and smoke. Now the Donut Molotov is actually an interesting one because it's a bugged Molotov or also what's known as a Magic Molotov. There will be a link in the description of a video describing the bug and how it works and I encourage you to watch it if you aren't familiar with it. But what this combo does to the CTs is if they decide to push past the window smoke, the placement of the Donut Molotov and smoke gives them two options. Either they go towards the cubby side where they're exposed to an early fight like we discussed earlier, or they're forced into Donut completely where it then makes it dangerous for them to push through the smoke and Molotov as then the T's could be holding it at that point. The Donut Molotov is important because it eliminates the ability for CTs to position themselves to challenge mid from this angle. As here you'll see that because there's no Molotov, Frozen is allowed to be here in the first place to spray down Lucky even while blind. Or in this example where you see Cold Zero playing anti-flash in this area and then peeking off a teammate's flash. Something that would be a lot harder if the Donut Molotov was here instead. Now typically after the Donut Molotov is thrown, the Donut Smoke is thrown immediately after since it follows a similar lineup. Now when it comes to the donut smoke, one thing important to note is that it pops fast enough for a T to run full sprint up middle without having to wait, meaning that as a T, when you run up towards mid, you don't have to hesitate thinking about whether or not the utility will bloom in time. Another thing to keep in mind is that even if a CT decides to go the longer way around to donut, they will not be able to beat the utility either. So by understanding this timing as a T, you can get to a spot where you'll be able to counter most re-aggressions through the donut position. 
Next, I want to talk about the flashes. Usually these are thrown by somebody who's still in spawn in order to help whoever's entering up middle. Now the most important thing is the actual timing of the flashes. And that's because you want to make sure the flashes don't pop too early because if they pop too early then it can't really be utilized by whoever's entering. The general rule of thumb would be to throw them only after the player reaches this point on the radar, which will then produce a flash that's much more like this to the CTs. Additionally, you may want to throw two flashes as this ensures that any CTs who are playing anti-flash for the first flash are blinded by the second, as well it gives the entry an option of using either flash to challenge, like config right here who decides to go close, so it's the second flash that he's peeking off of, or electronic here where he pats further towards the back, so it's the first flash that he's using to peek off of. And by varying which flash you peek off of, it makes it hard for the CT to predict when they should actually turn back like Axel here who was playing anti-flash for both flashes but ended up dying because Simple peeked on the first flash. Now let's talk about some counters. What can the CTs actually do against the T's with what's been shown so far? One of the most common counters is to simply throw this smoke that lands just in the middle and what it does is it gives an opportunity for a CT to play around it and make it difficult for the T's coming out. Combine this with a couple flashes from the back and one of the biggest struggles with the T's will be trying to time playing anti-flash properly and navigating the smokes correctly. Now one way around this is to simply send an opera to hold the edge of the smoke as the surrounding walls make it a bit harder for the flashes to hit. Another common counter to the fast mid that the T's could do is a simple HE stack. Here's an example right at the start of the round where God sent to a 3 man HE stack to basically blow up Hampus coming out of the choke point. This is a very effective counter because there isn't that much the T can do to avoid the nades other than just preemptively not pushing in the first place and waiting for the nades instead. Now a specific counter that FaZe used once is this one here where Twist actually throws a very shallow smoke along with the shallow Molotov that's close to the entrance. Then the second mid player Brokey, he's going to throw a Molotov in front of that smoke and what you'll end up seeing is this. A shallow smoke with Molotovs on both sides and this makes it very discouraging for a T to want to push through. And that's because even if they smoke the first Molotov, they still have to deal with the second Molotov here. So unless they had a second teammate come with them to also smoke this Molotov, this is an unfavorable situation to try to find an entry. Now when it comes to countering the Donut Molotov, CTs can throw a simple smoke like this to cancel the Molotov and produce a gap. And with this gap, a flash can be used like this off the wall to fight any T's coming out. CTs may also use a different approach, one where they'll actually let the T's come into mid and then counter with the flash when they're more out in the open. Glaive does a simple move that does exactly this, a simple right click flash through the window smoke to catch Nickelback as he's scaling up. And you'll see from Nickelback's point of view with all the sounds happening around him, he doesn't get any indication that this flash is coming. Ultimately you may even face a whole CT setup around it. Here you'll see a setup from a static where they have one player who jumps into cubby, the second player puts out the donut molotov to create space, and then lastly the third player sets up two flashes from behind the window smoke. And as the flashes pop, that's when the two players from cubby and donut peek to catch anybody in the open. So grabbing fast mid control can be fairly easy using all the utility, but you always have to watch out for all the possible CT counters. And if the CTs are dedicating this many resources to fighting you at middle, this might be an indication to focus more on the actual sites or to do a more delayed mid take. Which might be a topic for another video, but that's going to be it for now. If you guys liked what you saw, please drop a like, comment what you liked from the video, and subscribe if you want more content. It means a lot to me, so please do so. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time.